In this episode, I'm exploring the Hierarchy Gulf. Find myself a bit of maritime history in this wreck. I delve into some fascinating history behind this ship and uncover a story about a local sailing legend. In the last episode, you may remember I was doing a bit of slow sailing. Decided to up my game with this. This is a cruising chute. Never used it. It's basically brand new. It's been on the boat ever since I bought it. It's a handful to put up by yourself, but decided to have a go. Well, I don't know what condition it's in. It was brand new the last time I saw it. Most people will be familiar with a spinnaker, a large balloon type sail that goes on the front of the boat. This is similar. It comes in a launching sock. While she's all laid down like this, it's hard to work out what's what. And I'm not going to pull her out here. Uh, there's a bit of wind blowing. The local kids are out sailing. So that's where the sheet's attached to. That's just a, a guide, just something you can hold on to. As you can see here, the pulpit extends out in front of the boat. That's a slight problem because this sail, unlike normal sails, doesn't attach to a stay. It's kind of free floating. So I kind of had to work out a new way of doing it, hoping that this is going to work and clear the pulpit. This is all a bit sort of MacGyvered up, a bit of Heath Robinson stuff going on here. Um, but it'll, it'll do for now. We're going to experiment. Uh, this should be fun. And as I said, it's in a sock. The sock is basically a sheath that goes up the entire sail with its own ropes attached. When the whole thing's up, you pull on it and out pops the sail. Trying to get the green monster launch this morning. And I thought the wind was coming from one way, now it's coming from another way. So it's all going to spell disaster, but we'll give it a go. This is where it's bound to go wrong. I'm going to set the camera there. Hopefully we'll see something happen. I'm not sure what yet. Okay, I'm going to pull on a string and then that'll happen. Okay, immediately I can see something wrong. Uh, I don't know what that's doing there. Okay, try that. Whoa! Whoa! Right, that's all twisted at the front. If I can keep her there like that. Okay, all right. Yeah. Oh, so I want this to work. Right, it's still a bit low, but I, I don't know. I think the feeling it might be a bit big. Rick looked at it yesterday, he thought it was big for the boat, but boy, well, he's running, see what happens. <sighs> There's stuff everywhere, I know. Oh, riding turn, damn it. That's kind of it, but what am I doing? One knot. <laughs> oh dear, okay. Where's the wind now? It's in the right place. I need to uh, get that a little bit better. Things are all wrong. I'm sure there are plenty of people watching this going, Barry, that's wrong. I know, but how to make it right? This is why putting something this big up by yourself is not a good idea. All right, we're doing one knot. All right, but I'm gonna play with this. I'll turn the engine off in a minute. And of course, as soon as I got the thing up, the sailing gods decided to ruin my day and take away the wind. So pulled it back down, uh, back in the sock. Then a little later on, almost imperceptibly, the wind started to come back. Time to try again. Coming up to a beautiful little island, it's slightly different to the other ones in that it's got some trees and things on there, um, but it, it hides a little secret. Round the corner, there's a shipwreck from the 1800s called the Rewa. 
and it's connected to a guy called Johnny Ray who's a local hero here um, a sailor from the old school of sailing uh, built his own boat and his garage his dad's garage back in the 1930s um, and uh, it's, it's a lot of history and connection here uh, with the past uh, in the sailing world and with this this ship the Rewa lays to rest just in a bay around the corner and uh, I didn't realize I didn't know it was here I didn't realize it was here there's the island and I've got to get the big green fella down and so I'm looking for a bit of space which is about over there I think so I'm gonna start the engine and uh, see what's what I'm a bit nervous I've not done this before we I did it early on this morning but there wasn't any wind now there's wind so I think I'll, uh, I'll pull my way up and then go downwind so it deflates and then uh, pull it in Some of the nicest looking sort of topography and scenery, if you will, that I've come across. And there's some strange stuff over here. It looks like maybe some defensive thing or an old dock, I don't know. It was kind of beautiful, but I had actually no idea what this place was. There's some pretty heavy cement works uh, here, so somebody's uh, gone to a lot of effort. But what was it? If you like mussels, there's lots of them down there. Probably why there's no birds here. Huh. I love the outdoors and this kind of thing. The beauty of this island was just absolutely outstanding. Ah, I think this is the end of my beach I could cross that as a sandbar so I don't, I've, got, I've got shoes on but I don't want to get them wet but this is pretty spectacular I'm glad I came here I really am this is just beautiful this will be my last hurrah here in New Zealand I think the best was last this is this is spectacular I want to take you back to 1932 and the recession here in New Zealand and an incredible story about a man. This man, this is Johnny Ray, and he made himself a boat in his father's own garage. As it was in the middle of the Great Recession and he had no money, he had to use whatever he could get his hands on. Fencing wire was used as nails and road tar was used as corking. Borrowing a friend's boat, he went around the Hieraki Gulf Islands looking for bits and pieces like logs and timber that he could use to build his boat with. It was then that he came across this. This is the wreck of the Rewa. Originally called the Alice A. Lee, the Rewa was built in 1889 in England. Later, Captain Charlie Hansen, a 74-year-old who lived in the area here, bought the wreck after she'd ended up on this island story then comes full circle when our hero Johnny Ray turns up he's looking for parts for his boat build visits Charlie Hansen his little house next to the wreck makes a deal food for parts hard to get supplies out here in the islands so the deal works well one of the spars off the Rewa ends up being on Johnny's boat Nagataki as its new mast Johnny's boat was later restored and still exists to this day in Auckland. But what happened to the old ship, the Rewa? Well, that's where I come into the story.
You can see with close-ups of the old girl, there's not much of her left. Most of it was taken, as I said, back in the 30s. Uh, and the, the hull itself uh, is in bad state. If you look closer, you can see how she was built. You can see the rivets in there. Of course, this was before the age of welding, and she was one of the first steel ships, just before the advent of steam engines. There's a couple of guys over there. The fella said, I recognize you. You do make the videos, don't you? Yeah. Um, it's lovely. A lot of people watch the videos here in New Zealand. I mean, a lot. Uh, and it's, um, it's nice. It's nice to meet people. It really is. I love it. I'm just, it's, I'm just so happy people enjoy the videos. Anyway, enjoy this. Oh, I hate climbing up hills. <laughs> Turn around. I don't do hills anymore. I kind of was climbing something with Rick yesterday. Well, that's a nice view. And I, I couldn't keep up with him. It's been part of my life not having stamina. But it's not getting any better as I get older. I'll tell you that. I hate giving up on shit like that. Anyway, this uh, Johnny Ray character I was telling you about met up with this old fella that owned a cabin up here somewhere and he bought the wreck of the rewire which is the wreck we've just been looking at down there um because when uh, a ship sinks all well, this and that insurance is paid out and you can buy it off the insurance company for its scrap value or whatever and um Johnny Ray came in here and uh, made an agreement for ropes, tarpaulins, bits of sail, and some of the spars off that wreck to make the mast on his boat that he was making in his father's garage. This was in the 1930s. So being a bit of an amateur historian, I was interested to find if there was anything left of that time, anything left of the story. I came across this while looking for Charlie Hansen's old house, which apparently doesn't exist. Looks a little bit like part of a rudder. You can see copper there, which is what they used to use on the bottom of old ships. You used to nail it on, that would stop any growth, uh, seaweed and so on, growing on the bottom. You can see a cut out there. It looks like a part of a hinge or something. Weird, if you look at the, the wreck again, there looks like there must have been some wooden infill on them in the metal surround, so possibly. In the bush, I could search forever and never find the old guy's cabin. I think I'll go back to the seashore and see what I see on the seashore. Just found that. That's all smoothed out. Circle of stones and a tree, as it would have been at the time, which is just lying there now. Ornamental tree. Hmm. Some old bits of iron on the beach. Could well have been from the Rewa. There's the wreck. And here's something on the beach. It's wood. I reckon that's a spar. It's rotted from the front. Could be a spar, because these things were huge on sailing ships of the era. Is it one that was left behind? Some metal in there. Metal in there. Cut out spar. Metal there. Metal there. I reckon it's certainly from the ship. Further along the beach, I found this little plateau just back in the woods. Perfect place for a house. And I, um, I can see something up there that is definitely man-made. Let's go and take a look. I'm never happier than when I'm in the bush scrabbling around looking for things. And this took my interest. Just look at this. What is it?
it's a hoop off a mast. It's mast furniture, if you like. Uh, that would have gone on the mast or possibly a spar. The width of that is it's probably more or less off a spar. But it was the toilet seat that threw me. I mean, oh my goodness me. But you can see there the detail. I've looked at photographs of the wreck and other sailing ships of the era. And I'm, I'm convinced that this is uh, part of the ship probably as I said off the mast, but it's made into an outside toilet. There was actually a hole dug underneath this, and uh, I thought I'd try it out for historical purposes only, of course. It was so obviously a piece of the ship repurposed into an outside toilet. Possibly Johnny sat here as well at one time. Yes, only I can bring history down to this kind of level. If you want to know more about the story and the adventures of the Nagataki and Johnny Ray, get the book South Sea Vagabonds. It's really worth the read. I promised myself a cold beer on the, uh, the beach. Squeaky, my beer's on board. Would you mind coming back here? <laughs> I hate it when inanimate objects don't do as they're told. Better check the regulations. You can do some walking, you can't camp, you can't light fires, and dogs are not allowed. Doesn't say anything about beer though. At the end of the day, after a good sail and a bit of an island adventure, and uh, checking out some history, nothing like sitting on a log on the beach having a cold beer. I know, Squeaky. We're going to go home in a minute. Just wait for me. Thank you so much for watching that episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. As I leave the site of the Rewa, I'm on to more adventures. I hope you'll join me then. To make sure you never miss an episode, please press the subscribe button, it really helps me. And that notification bell, that way you'll never miss another episode. I'd like to thank my patrons for their amazing support. If you would like real-time updates, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, take care.